Psalms chapter 63. A Psalm of David when he was in the wilderness of Judah. Again, another Psalm that we can point out and find scripturally where it's placed. O oh God, you know, it's amazing how you can place some of these Psalms and you can't find the birthday of Jesus. There are th some things that God wants us to know and there are things that God doesn't want us to know. O oh God, thou art my God. Yes, <coughs> pardon me. The God of the Bible. There are plenty of gods that David could have chose all around him. Listen, Egypt had gods a dime a dozen. There were gods in, in the Philistines. There were gods in Edom, gods in Moab, all around. There were even gods in the land. Because Israel did not kick out and destroy the people that were in the land. So David had a vast choice of gods, but he chose God. That's who we're to choose. We're to choose the God of the Bible. Early will I seek thee. Now what's that mean? That means two things. Early in the morning. Prayer time. Time when the manna went out. Early. Every Bible character in the Bible, when God has given them a job, they got up early and went. Abraham got up in the morning and took his son Isaac and went off. When uh, Cornelius sends for uh, Peter, Peter, they lodged that night in, in, in uh, the Tanner's house. They rose up in the morning and went. Early also can mean don't wait till your troubles are, are over your head. At the first sign, and I don't like using that word, but at the first sign that there's going to be a situation, good or bad, seek the Lord. And then you'll get through whatever it is. And there'll be no sin. For seeking God early, before it even comes, is seeking God first. And that's the first commandment. My soul thirsts for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. The body needs air, water, and food. And in that order. You can't live long without air. You can live longer without food. And you can live even longer, excuse me, air, if you, if you lost air, you won't live. You can live a little longer without water than you can do with air. And you can live a little longer without food than with water. And as you're thirsty and dying of a quench, your tongue in your mouth is dry. You've got to have water or you'll die. It is the relationship that you are to have for God. Job said, I esteem the words of the Lord more than my necessary food. Esau, in his, uh, his worldliness, fleshfulness, he went after a, a, a thing of beans and gave up the blessing of the Lord. You got to long for the Lord as you long for water. Water is refreshing. Water is natural. Water is what the body needs. God is what you need. And he speaks of soul and the flesh. To see thy power, God's power. We talked about power last night, I believe. And thy glory. There's no power but the power of God. And there's no glory but the glory of God. God is light. And he don't need an extension cord. He don't need a nuclear power plant. His attribute is one of them is light. And power. And glory. 
So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. What is David saying there? David says, I saw the Lord in the, in the tabernacle. As I have seen thee, God, in the sanctuary. There is something about the Lord that David saw. Because thy God's loving kindness is better than life. God's loving kindness will get you into eternity to be with the Lord Jesus Christ today for all eternity. And that's better than life here on this planet. It's eternal life. Without pain, without sorrow, a new body we will get. David and his people that do right will get the new earth. And we'll get that, that promised kingdom, that physical land grant that they've been desiring ever since Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. My lips shall praise thee. Speaking about the Lord, speaking about how gracious it is, as much as putting that water to your lips for a drink. Thus will I bless thee while I live. All right, while I'm living... You're, you're better than life, but since I'm living, I'm going to bless thee. And bless when you find out um, when Leah's son, back in Genesis, I forget which son's name. Ru no, not Reuben. But she says, blessed, I shall be happy. Bless means happy. Thus will I make God happy. You can make God happy. Imagine putting a, a, a smile on God. Who would be any better book to, to, to do? I think it would put a smile on God's face when, when Satan put all those charges against Job and Job didn't flaunter. He didn't fail. He stayed to God and blessed God and did not charge God foolishly. Neither did he sin with his mouth. That will lips. That's what we just read. That blessed God. It made Satan angry. You know, what, you know what makes God happy? When you put Satan down as the accuser. When Satan comes up and says, Hey, I saw that Christian do. And then God turns to the son and What's to him? What sins are you talking about? It's all under the blood. That pleases the Lord. Because Satan has no charges. But if you don't put it under the blood, then Satan was right. I don't think it pleases God when you make Satan right. I will lift I will lift up my hands in thy name. Today it's 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 all about me. These people I see do it, you know. They're not in church Sunday night. They're not in church Wednesday. But Sunday morning, you know. It's got to be for the Lord. Do you do it when no one else is around? I mean, yay or nay. I'm not saying it's not for God. I'm not saying it is for God. But some of the people I see do it. And let me ask you a question. If you were to take ten people that in church raises their hand, take them off all by himself and say, why do you do that? Could they give you an answer? Let me, let me, let me go a little further. Can they give you a scriptural answer why they do it? That's what it's all about, Scripture. Our foundation of our conduct should be Bible, not how we feel or because somebody else did it or because of man, because of world. I do it because of chapter and verse. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. Marrow is that part in your bones that makes you healthy. That makes the white blood cells. And 
If you got proper moral, you are healthy. Fatness means, hey, I'm well fed. I'm not lacking. I'm healthy and I'm not lacking. And my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. So out of 365 days, one day out of the year, America proclaims to give God thanks, which they don't do today. Eating turkey and watching pigskin. How many Christians praise the Lord Monday? Oh, it's Monday. Oh, I can't stand Monday. This is a day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. TGIF. Why is Friday so different from Monday? All you're going to do is go out and waste your money on stupid things you shouldn't be wasting your money on. Oh, I praise the Lord with joyful lips all the time. When I remember thee upon my bed, can't sleep. You're about to get you're about to go to sleep. You are waking up. Do you remember God? I'm quoting from the scriptures. I'm reading to you black and white words. You think a, a man, I'm talking to Christians, you think a Christian can remember the God upon my bed when he takes a woman who's not his wife? As some pastors have been charged? Can you really remember the Lord? And meditate Think about on thee, God, in the night watches. Now, until today when the Lord showed me something, night watches, I figured, here's David. He's a military man. So, you know what? He's got night duty. He's got guard patrol, and that's not what it means. I always thought that was it. You got, or you used to be called night watchmen. And those would be the security guards that go around in the night and walk. And that's not what it is. But that's where they get it from, from the Bible. Now, according to Exodus 14, 24, and Judges 7, 18, <laughs> Psalms 90, verse 4, Matthew 14, 25, and you can rewind and get these. Matthew 24, 43, and Luke 12, 38. There were four watches in the night. The night from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. was divided into four categories. I think it's I think it'd be three hours each or four hours each. That's what that means. And when it leaves there upon the night watches, oh, I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Well, you know, that's not, listen, with Jewish time, Jewish Bible. Any time of night do you meditate on the Lord. Nature calls. Are you thinking to jump back in the bed or are you use an opportunity to pray somebody for somebody? When you go into that midnight snack or that midnight drink in the refrigerator, did you thank the Lord with your lips? And you know what Jesus did? He went out to the mountain at night and he prayed and meditated to the Lord. I'm telling you, the Bible does not give much for sleep, except for when you're dead. Because thou has been my help. Has God ever helped you? Now, if he's never helped you, then you don't remember him and you don't meditate on him. If he's never, ever helped you. If he's done nothing for you. 
Absolutely nothing. You can sit down with a piece of paper and a pencil or pen and with an eraser, and you can write down number one, and you can't think of nothing that God's done for you. <coughs> don't remember him and don't meditate on him on that case. I think that's impossible. Because the very first thing is he called you to the Lord Jesus Christ. The second thing, he got you saved. And you can build on with that. Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings, again, we've talked about the wings in the last few chapters, will I rejoice. Is that chicken going under the bird? It's the, the chick under the mother bird, the protection. God is likened to a mother. Tell that to the Catholics. Has God ever referenced himself to a woman? Right there. As a mother for protection to bring you where you can be fed he gives us bread he gives us water and you can keep going with with all the an mother animal uh, wing winged animals my soul that part of you that's eternal follows hard after thee. Without breaking. Without bending. No flexibility. You want to see flexibility, you go to Revelation chapter 3, verses 15, 16, 17, and 18. That is a church that is flexible and bending and unyielding. Let me ask you a question with, with, da with David in your life. If you had somebody who was out, I mean physically, trying to kill you and has done the practice, and you escaped it, and twice God brings you into his presence, you're just going to uh, slide off and, and walk away from the situation. Thy right hand upholdeth me. Right hand is where Jesus sits. The only one that's upholding you and keeping you going and keeping you what you are and who you are is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Messiah of the Jews. But those that seek my soul saw Absalom Philistines, Goliath, to destroy it. Jesus said, fear not him that can destroy the body, but fear him that's able to destroy the body and cast your soul into hell. You know, when you read Fox's Book of Mars, what's to destroy it? When they actually take your body, your, your body and burn it to its complete ashes. They had taken bodies of saints out of the ground and desiccated it. They were so angry with that person, just the mere the corpse wasn't good enough. And they would destroy it. Shall go into the lower parts of the earth. And that's where the Jehovah Witnesses get it wrong. That's the grave. Not with scripture, scripture, which we're doing chapters now. We're not doing scripture, but that is hell. Hell is the lower parts of the earth. It's in the center of the earth. So when they did a movie and a book about the center of the earth, they didn't find hell. They were wrong. They found water. Wrong gulf. You know, all man's looking for water. NASA looks for water. Why are they looking for water? Why do they find water? Because they say that's where water comes from, the life. You know, we're tadpoles. And Jesus said himself, unless he be born of water and of the Spirit, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. You need to be born again. 
Man keeps on trying to put himself back in the womb. While in America, you, you try to kill the babies in the womb. This is the wrong blood. You're spilling the blood of babies in the womb, and you're supposed to turn to the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that was a wham. Wow. That was a mouthful the Lord just laid on me. They shall fall by the sword. War. That's what the sword usually pictures like that. War. Battles. Conflicts. They shall be a portion for, uh, for foxes. Their bodies left out in, out in the ground and being eaten by wild animals. Jezebel was eaten by a dog. The Bible speaks of Armageddon that it's going to be a feast for all the birds. And then you become animal poop. Imagine pointing to animal uh, fertilizer and say, hey, that was tongue. Tongue don't look too well. That's what the Bible's saying. And there's some worldly expressions out there like you look like, <clears throat> I'm not going to say it, but didn't Jezebel at the end look like, <clears throat> for she was doo-doo, dung, poo-poo, caca. I'm just being frank. I'm not trying to be cruel. But the king shall rejoice in God. Go back and do a study of all the kings in Israel that, that rejoice in God. You'll find a big fat zero. Go to the kings of Judah and find that rejoiced in God. You'll find very few. But there were some. Everyone that sweareth by him, God, shall glory. So you used to take an oath in, in the courtroom to swear by God to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. You don't say that no more. Must be a lot of liars. I ain't afraid to say to God, I swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And you put me on a witness stand and ask me a question I don't know, I will say I don't know or I think this is the answer. I'm not afraid. Somebody must fear the consequences of telling a lie. If you go into our studies of the existence of God, let's get rid of God so we don't have to be attributed to him. We don't have to be judged by him. We don't have to give account to God. So we just get rid of him. And then another thing swearing by God is God expects you to do what you swear. Don't you tell the angels it was a mistake, the Bible says. It is a sin to tell God you'll do something and you don't. Well, I didn't know. You should have shut up. Well, it's impossible for me to do that. You should have shut up. But the mouth of them that speak lies, we went into that last night, shall be stopped. The entire, I don't know how long you can go back, White House, Capitol Hill, Washington, D.C. Oh, it goes all the way back to George Washington cutting down the cherry tree, I guess. That was a lie. They're all going to be stopped and silence by the words of Jesus Christ telling them depart from me if you're a Christian and you lie you'll be stopped by ashes as it burns up If you lie as a Christian, John 8, 44, you have taken Satan's side and made him happy. Look at verse 4.
I would not want to be a lying Christian. The Bible says we're going to get a new name. Now, I don't know if it's possible, but if you are a liar as a Christian, I don't know if I would want a name, maybe Lucifer or, or liar. It's, imagine being, hi, how you doing? My name is Faith. What's your name? You know, according to Pilgrim's Progress, my name is Liar. Try living with that name for all eternity. Lies, lies, lies. We all lie. Because our father, who was, who was our father from birth, was the liar. God who never lies. Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in That on the cross My burden gladly bearing He bled and died To take away my sin Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art Sings my soul, my Savior.